wait. If you're having washer problems, discovering if you own a vertical modular washer, or VMW, for short, and understanding its secret electronic repair system is very important. If you're not sure what kind of washer you have, just simply look at the control panel to see if it has six cycle status lights in a row. Five of these lights are green, indicating stages like sensing, fill, rinse, spin, and done. The sixth light, in red, signifies that the lid is locked. If you have these lights, then you have a VMW, which is not surprising seeing it is the most sold washer in the US and is sold by most brands such as Kenmore, Whirlpool, Amana, Maytag and many more. All VMWs, regardless of brand, follow the same simple repair process, and by learning this method, you can potentially save thousands on washer repairs. These machines are specifically designed for straightforward easy and cheap repairs, that's why I am here to provide you with the knowledge and the confidence to troubleshoot and even repair your own washer without relying on expensive repair services. In this tutorial, you're about to master the art of entering diagnostic mode, interpreting error codes, and recalibrating your VMW. Armed with these simple tricks, you'll not only become an instant pro, but also the hero of your household, impressing even the most skeptical spouse. If your washer has these lights, like you see on this video, get ready to fix that washer and take control of your laundry routine. Entering Diagnostic Mode on a Vertical Modular Washer To get to Recalibration Mode, the Self-Test Mode, Error Code Mode and or all of the other modes you must enter the washer into Diagnostic Mode first. You will have to re-enter Diagnostic Mode every time. From there, you choose what to do next by clicking the knob a certain amount of times. If your lights don't blink, try again, this time turning the knob faster or maybe slower. If it never works your control board is no good try replacing it. If your washer starts, but doesn't finish the recalibration cycle, change your shift actuator and or lid lock. Here's instructions teaching you to enter diagnostic mode on your washer. With the washer off, basket empty, lid closed, water connected, and no soap in it, turn the control dial one complete rotation, 360 degrees, counterclockwise. Quickly, within about 6 seconds, turn the control dial three clicks clockwise, one click back, and one more click clockwise. Successful activation of the recalibration mode is indicated when all the green status lights blink. In the diagnostic mode, with all lights flashing, select the recalibration cycle by turning the control dial four more clicks clockwise. When the rinse light turns on, press the start button. After you do this, your washer will run for the next two to three minutes as it checks for errors and factory resets itself. When the recalibration cycle successfully ends, the lid unlocks and the washer shuts off. If your washer got to this point, go ahead and try a load with no clothes to see if the problem is fixed. If not, continue watching this video because we are going to teach you how to have your washer tell you exactly what's wrong using error codes. If your washer will not turn on, or it will not enter recalibration mode, odds are, your control board is bad. It is recommended by manufacturers to run the recalibration mode every time you change a part, relocate or install a vertical modular washer. Once in diagnostic mode and with all of the lights blinking, Turn the dial one more click clockwise, then press the start button. This reveals the first pair of error codes. Each code has two parts, an F, followed by a number, and an E, followed by another number. The letters and numbers are represented by different lights being on or off. Get a piece of paper and write on one line. Sensing light on equals F. On the next line write. Sensing light off equals E. Then each line after that put. Wash equals 8. Rinse equals 4. Spin equals 2. Cycle complete equals 1. Then write down the numbers to the corresponding lights that are on on your washer as they flash, add the numbers together for each code individually and put the correct letter in front of it and you're done. Here's an example code, the sensing light on is the F code, and if the rinse and cycle complete lights are on as well, then they would equal 5. So the first code would be F5. Then on the opposite blink, the sensing light is off, which means it's the E code, and the spin and cycle complete light are on, which would equal 3. Our code would be F5E3. It's advisable to have pen and paper handy to this methodical process, along with noting the numbers displayed for each code, helps in deciphering and understanding the washer's error codes accurately for effective troubleshooting. To view each set of error codes, simply turn the dial one click clockwise to cycle through your codes. Turn off the washer to exit diagnostic mode. Here's something to note, the lifespan of appliances has significantly dropped, from a sturdy 20 to 40 years, down to a measly 3 to 4 if you're lucky. These insight comes from my 15 plus years in the appliance repair industry. That's why I strongly suggest considering a 5-year extended warranty. 
with appliances having shorter lifespans and getting heavier usage, that extended warranty becomes a safety net you'll likely need. When it comes to washers, two major players stand out, top-load and front-load machines. Knowing their ins and outs is crucial for finding the right fit for your laundry. But before we dive in, let's talk about a few things. A manufacturer's warranty, usually lasting a year, covers any defects or issues that might pop up with the appliance. This comes with any and every appliance sold, and is free even if you don't buy the add-on warranty. Also, most utility companies offer rebates for new, energy-efficient washers, which, by the way, are pretty much the standard these days and can save you 50 to 100 bucks on your purchase. I recommend opting for a basic, low-cost washer with a 5-year warranty and holding on to that warranty like it's gold. Trust me, whether you buy the most expensive model or the mid-range one, a higher price tag doesn't guarantee a longer appliance life, it just adds more fancy features. In this video, we are discussing error codes and solutions for all brands of vertical modular washers. This video is valuable for diagnosing issues and guiding a proper repair. Let's break down the codes and how to fix them. Excessive suds. Error codes, SD or F0E2 reduce soap usage and consider using heat detergent. Overload. Error codes, F0E3 wash fewer clothes at a time, try recalibration, and check motor, belt, and control board if needed. Spin limited by water temp error code, F0E4, secure water connections, try recalibration, and inspect water inlet valves, thermistor, and control board. Unbalanced load. Error code, F0E5 recalibrate, replace suspension rods. Main control board failure. Error codes, F1E1 or F1E2, consider recalibration, and replace the main control board if it doesn't help. User interface problems. Error codes, F1E3, F2E1, F2E3, F2E4, or F2E5 recalibrate. If it doesn't fix it replace the control board. Water level or temperature issues. Error codes, F3E1, or F3E2 test and change faulty parts like the thermistor, water sensor hose, or control board. Recalibration might help. Lid issues. Error codes, F5E1, F5E2, F5E3, or F5E4, try recalibration. If not fixed, replace the lid lock. Possible parts include the lid lock, lid lock strike, and control board. Communication problems. Error codes, F6E2, or F6E3, ensure wiring connections are secure and try recalibration. Possible parts involved are wiring harnesses and the control board. Power loss. Error codes, F7E0, F7E1, check the power supply for issues related to power supply components. Motor, belt, and shift actuator problems. Error codes, F7E2, F7E3, F7E4, F7E5, F7E6, F7E7, F7E8, or F7E9 attempt recalibration. Possible parts include the motor, belt, shift actuator, and control board. 